Hello there. Um, this week I want to talk about change and what stops us from engaging with things that may help us. Um, a few people have said that they find doing CBT a lot of work because it involves writing things down, examining what you're doing day to day, um, and they've tried to keep a thought diary that I talked about last time, and they've tried to problem solve using the worry tree, but things still aren't improving for them. The same problems keep coming back and their life doesn't seem to change. So what I thought I'd do was I'd give you an example of somebody who came to see me, another person this week, and this guy was unable to stick with the programme. And I'll tell you what he learned about why this was happening and how he began to make, you know, make some changes. So I've changed his name and we call him Reese. And he tried CBT, but he only dipped his toe in as far as he could, as, as far as he could. Um, but he, he felt better, he said, by talking, but nothing massively changed for him. He was using the depression program on Silver Cloud and he had an underlying sense that things weren't right. He was angry and unhappy a lot of the time. There was always something better he had to do. You know, he didn't want to sit down and do his CBT. Um, he told me he got interrupted often by the kids. He was tired, he forgot. It, he felt like it was too many words on the screen. And when you're feeling low anyway, it was really hard trying to motivate himself to do the program. So he was on the point of disengaging from Silver Cloud. So I asked him to take a step back. And we started to look up why he might be having trouble with engaging with the program. Um, many people say that many people start actually and they, they lose interest. And it's worth exploring why that might be. Because the losing interest is the point at which you give up. <laughs> as soon as you lose interest in the programme, you just give up until change never happens. Um, so recently I began to explore his underlying beliefs and the impact they may have been having on his lack of motivation to do the CBT. Now, they're called underlying beliefs in CBT because they are hidden from ourselves and from other people. Underlying beliefs are like core beliefs and they are sometimes core core beliefs. And they're formed in childhood and in the teenage years. And it's a good idea to try and weed some of them out so we can see what's holding us back. And because they've been around a long time, a lot of people think that core beliefs or underlying beliefs, this is just your personality, <laughs> but it's more than that. They make up what looks like your personality. A good place to start looking at our underlying beliefs is, um, is by exploring what beliefs we do have and what this looks like to other people. So we're gonna put a slide up now to show you um, what other people see and what is actually going on beneath the surface. So this is called the iceberg diagram. So you can see in the iceberg diagram, you can see at the top, the, the little piece of the iceberg that's sticking up above the water, because as you know, icebergs are huge, they're massive, and there's a huge chunk of ice underneath the water, and all you ever see is the little piece at the top. So some people are brilliant blaggers, and they never let people know how they really feel, so they only ever show that little piece of ice at the top there. But underneath, it's really worth exploring what's going on underneath the surface so we can understand why we behave the way we do. So you can see that underneath the surface, our beliefs, our worldview and our values are all hidden. Um, so Reese wanted to keep it all as simple as possible. So what we did was we drew out an iceberg diagram and filled it all in. Now, if we take the iceberg diagram down, I've got one here, which I've drawn, which is one we used, and we used it on a big piece of paper. I don't know if you can see that, I mean, it's huge. Um, but just to give you an example of what we used. So we, we did the eye at the top and we drew what people could actually see, what people were commenting to him. And people were telling him that he was angry, he was sulky, he was unfriendly, he was moody. This is what people could see. That piece of the iceberg at the top was that how they saw him. Then we started looking what was going on for him underneath. And there was a lot of emotional stuff, as you'd imagine. And he was really embarrassed. There was no, no change was taking place. He felt quite irritated as well. And we started looking at the beliefs that were underneath the surface as well. Stuff like, I'm never going to improve. I'm powerless over my life. I should know how to do CBT, you know, children can do CBT, why can't I do it? Life will always be like this. Um, my dad told me I was lazy, 
nothing ever changes for me, only for other people. You know, he had those, all those underlying be beliefs were underneath his surface and values as well. We, we looked at some of his values and things that he thought were important to him. And we put all of that so we could see all this hidden stuff that nobody else saw. So I'll just put that back over there. But that's that's a large scale, as you can imagine, ice, iceberg drawing. But if you want to do one yourselves, it's quite easy to draw one out on a small piece of paper. Um, so his low mood is coming from his submerged iceberg of past stuff and not from his experience of life today. So um, like you might have seen in the media recently, there's been a few cases of, of high profile celebrities in the media and they've been in court over their destructive behaviour. Um, and you might wonder, why haven't they looked beneath the surface to understand what's going on and exploring those hidden factors that are in that bottom part, part of the iceberg that are keeping them stuck? So Reese did that. He didn't want to keep stuck. He wanted to look and explore what was going on for him. So one of the underlying beliefs that we found for him was that he believed that nothing changes for him. Right. He couldn't see the point of doing CBT because he said nothing changes for him. Nothing's ever changed for him. So what he began to realize was he had a resistance to doing the Silver Cloud program because he had an underlying belief that it wasn't going to work for him. It wasn't really because he didn't have the time to do it. or He didn't have the motivation to do it. He just had an underlying belief that it wasn't going to work. Now, this is often, you know, often felt by a lot of people. They don't realize that, oh, I just don't feel like doing it. I don't want to do it. But if you look deeper beneath beneath that um, reason at the top, you'll often find that there's a belief or a repetitive pattern going on in our lives that keeps that stuck. To be honest, this is a turning point for Reese when he realized that he was believing that nothing would ever change. And this belief had been set in stone since he'd been at school. Every time he sat down to a CBT, his past kicked in, his belief surfaced, and hey presto, he gave up, just like he always did. And he said to me that he had a track record of, of trying something once and then giving up. So he, you know, he's already doing that. He'd been doing that for a long time. Um, so we tried an easy CBT exercise to add to the hidden iceberg ex exercise, just to bring some more beliefs into the light. And we're just going to put this up for you now. Beck is going to put this up and it's called the should exercise. It's really easy and it helps you see what your beliefs about life are and what is holding you back. So as you can see, it goes it goes something like this. It's very simple. Um, you just have a list of things that that you think that you should be doing. It's quite a useful one to, to write out again and print out if, if you're keeping notes and have a look at all the shoulds. Because what this exercise does is to show you what your beliefs are and what you believe about the world. Now, Reese's chart was full of, I should be able to do CBT. I should be able to make time for doing this. My partner should be more understanding. The government should give me more money. We should be able to fix me completely in these few CBT sessions. He had a lot of shoulds that he thought should be happening. <laughs> and he believed them all to be completely true. He began to realize that, that uh, you know, this is how he was seeing life and that life wasn't actually like that for other people. This was just Reese's should list. It was just his way of seeing it. So if we take, take that slide away now. So after you've done all that work and you've started to do a bit more digging, you've looked at your iceberg diagram, you've looked at your shoulds, you start to get more of a picture that you're actually, you actually have a, a belief system that's propping up your life now. So what do you, what do, you do about that? So Reese and I started by looking at a, a quote that's in the Silver Cloud program that, that Becca's just going to put up for you now. And it's the quote number three. And it's the quote says, your life does not get better by chance. It gets better by change. So... You know, you can sit and hope that things are going to change. You can do nothing. You can not change a single thing, but nothing is is going to change. You have to do something for things to change. And Reese really realized, sorry, that believing that nothing ever changes for him was his way of avoiding doing things that would actually help him. 
his belief was keeping him stuck. Um, it would be useful for you to try the exercises we've done also to see if you've got a belief that's keeping you stuck. Um, so Reese knew that he had stepped, stopped taking the step back to his comfort zone every time he didn't feel like doing something new. Um, because what he was doing was when he was confronted with a new situation, his old belief system just kicked in and stopped him from doing it. Um, we wanted to keep it really simple um, because CBT is a cognitive behavior therapy. So you either go down the cognitive route where you look at all your thinking or you go down the behavior route where you look at how you behave. And for him, he felt that he wanted to start by looking at his behavior because um, he didn't want to do too much writing. He, you know, action was more up his street. So what, what we did was we decided um, that he would try one new thing each week and see if anything changed. I mean, you've heard me say this before, do one thing each week. But if you try and take on too much, it just becomes overwhelming. And then it's nothing. You never notice if you're actually succeeding at anything you're trying. So we would say one action at a time and act despite the beliefs. And I'll put that up again at the end, that quote. Um, Reese realised he'd been saying that it wasn't going to work because things hadn't worked out for him in the past. He kept repeating the same behaviour because his thoughts were the same as they'd always been. Um, he started to realise he was a creature of habit and he began to realise that it was thinking, it was his thinking coming from his beliefs about the world that were holding him back. Um, and he, be, he began to realise that he was only experiencing his beliefs about why he couldn't do Silver Cloud. So he got on and chose an activity together and he made an active choice to do things differently. Um, undercovering, undercovering your, uncovering even if I can say it properly, your underlying beliefs helps you to take charge of your life. It, you recognise the unconscious forces basically that drive your thoughts and behaviour, uh, you know, and they empower you to do something when you recognise them. And just to say that Silver Cloud has a whole section on core beliefs and it takes you through step by step through loads of exercises that help you explore all your hidden beliefs that you know you might find that useful if you join in with the program. Um, it takes time and practice really to, to look at what's going on underneath the surface. That's why it's useful to use these, these simple techniques to try it. Um, it's also important to know that you need to look at the emotional impact of your belief. Uh, Reese was scared because he couldn't hide behind the belief any longer that nothing changes for him. Once he realised that that was what was holding him in place, he had to take some action. So, um, you know, and despite that being his old belief system, sometimes uh, like having a new belief, like I can change, uh, makes you feel a bit more vulnerable because you're putting yourself out there now. So you think, oh my God, I, I can I can change, you know, and then you, you feel a bit under pressure and feel vulnerable. But it's... Um, you know, it's worth, worth, worth pushing through. Um, you may have heard the book Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. With CBT, you notice the thought that puts you off doing something, and then you go ahead and do it anyway. So if Becca just puts up that last slide again, what we suggest really in the Silver Cloud program is that you take one action at a time and you act despite the beliefs. So Reese was beginning to do one thing each week, something new that he hadn't done before to make the change. And he was going to act even if he knew that, oh, here, here we go. My belief's been triggered. I don't think I can do this. I'm, I've, I've never been able to do it in the past. I've failed. It doesn't work for me. He, he knew that was going on, but he was going to do something anyway so he could maintain the momentum. Because once you start maintaining the momentum against your belief system, you start to notice a change. It's like a kickback against the beliefs. I hope that hasn't been too complicated and too difficult this week, but it was worth talking about core beliefs because, you know, they're there for all of us. And I really recommend that you look in the Silver Cloud program at that particular topic because it's, it explains it very, very well. And there's some great exercises you can try. So I hope that's been useful and I'll see you again next time with a different topic. Thanks very much. Bye.